Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. We're only a few weeks away from the next expansion and also the end of this rank season. In case you don't know, March 27th is a really big day for lore, so mark your calendars and also use these decks to climb until then. Here are three really insane decks for ladder. Trust me, you don't want to miss out. That way you have a good understanding of what's strong, whether you want to play the best decks themselves or if you want to know how to counter them. Let's see what these strong decks are, shall we? Welcome to Meta Report. And we'll be starting off with what I believe to be the single best deck of this patch and the one that I'm going to recommend for climbing the most, Elder Dragon Morgana Shavana. Coming in with a win rate of 57.25% and a play rate of 2.20%, it is doing extremely well. Its best matchups include Zed Gwen, Jinani, Meg, and also Kate Timo. Its worst matchups are Lurk, Elder Dragon Mordekaiser Viego, Ash LeBanc, and Echo Jinx. So yeah, this deck is basically a Demacia powerhouse. It does a little bit of everything, and it does everything extremely well. It has a really strong early game, it's got really insane mid game, and tons of ways to close out the late game, with plenty of interaction to stop the opponent's strategies as well. Getting right into it, we have Triple Dragon Allegiant, which fetches us more dragons as long as we behold one in hand or on board. Really nice at just getting extra resources. Really strong consistency tool while also being a 2 mana 2-3 body. Next we have Double Dragon Lieutenant, same thing if we behold a dragon we have an additional effect. This one is Challenger on a 3-2 body which is super nice at contesting early boards. Double form up for protection. Triple Petrocyte Broadwing to have more Challenger uh, mechanics going, that way again we can basically slow down the opponent's early game developments, make sure we grab some elusives, grab some high value champions, things like that. Triple Single Combat to basically turn our big bodies that we have on our dragons into kill spells, which is super good, especially since our dragons will gain more stats as we kill the opponent's units. Triple blocking badger bear to deal with more pesky elusives, one gentleman's duel for another strike spell, triple strafing strike for yet another strike spell, so we are equipped with seven strike spells total, three single, three strafing, one gentleman's duel, really nice ratios here. You can have two gentlemen's duel if you want and run eight, that's up to you. So yeah, strafing strike really nice because it has dragon synergy and is equipped with a heal. Double Mage Seeker Inquisitor, which is replaceable if you want. I'll talk about some replacements at the end. Uh, he's a 4-2-2 that suppresses. He's okay. It's just basically something to play right on turn 4 if you don't have a 2-drop or a 3-drop or Shivana. Basically just something else to work with. Um, then we have Shivana, who's going to come down. She's going to level pretty often since we are playing Dragons in the mid game. And she also gives you an extra Strafing Strike, which is a great uh, Strike spell. She gives it to you for 2 mana, so it's better than the hard run ones. And also, you can just continue contesting the board. If you draw multiple Shivanas, I mean, she's also fantastic. So, just overall, a really, really good mid-game card that actually scales super well into the mid and late game. Next, we have Double Morgana to come down. Also, mess with the opponent. Gives us something to play on 5. Lifesteal unit, so that's really good against aggro. Slowing down the opponent's game plan by shackling something when they tap below 4 is really, really strong. And then also, we're going to level Morgana pretty consistently with this deck. Because when we apply boons to our dragons, that counts as targeting units. And also, strike spells count as 2 targets. Because, like, let's say we do single combat. That's target ally, plus also target enemy. So that's 2 for Morgana. So, she's going to be leveling pretty fast, even though she got nerfed pretty recently. So just keep that in mind. Really, really good finisher card. Really strong, again, in the same way that Shivana is. Good like right on curve, but also even good a few turns later. Next we have Cloud Drake to cheap in our hand. That way we can play other big dragons. Really, really nice. We can start playing cards in conjunction with, with each other. So we can play like, you know, um, five mana Fire Splitter and also five mana Lookout, and that feels really cool. So yeah, Cloud Drake gives us more options. Uh, Lookout's really good for rallying. You can attack twice in the same turn, or you can attack on defense turn. Feel really good about that. Fire Spitter still being pretty strong. Uh, dealing two to get rid of something is Challenger. Gets a boon. All good stuff. And next we have Gentle Gem Dragon. This is a really cool card because this actually works with our strike spells. So we basically get a bunch of nice buffs as we play our stuff. As we get boons down, as we play our strike spells. Just really, really cool. Like um, Stat Amper here. Next we have Double Alatis to apply the Dragon Boons to all of our Dragons, that also feels really good, especially when you get like AoE Challenger, AoE Deathless, AoE Fearsome, all kinds of good stuff. AoE Tough, Alatis is a really really scary card, if he gets like 2 or 3 Boon procs off, then you're just in a really really solid position to close out like any game. And finally, one of Elder Dragon, if we draw into him or if we get the Dragon Allegiant to draw into him, then we can play around Elder in the late game, get his level. We're going to be attacking quite a lot, 
and we um, are going to get his discount quite a lot as well. So the Elder Dragon can actually level, especially in the mirror match or any game that goes a bit longer, then Elder Dragon becomes a pretty reasonable win con for us. Now, something I want to touch on is that there are new dragons that were added to the game recently from the variety patch, and I think they're being slept on a little bit. Both the Horned Swarm Caller and also Edestine the Disgraced are really solid cards. So like, let's say for example, you really don't vibe with the Mage Seeker Inquisitor, feel free to take out to a him, add in two Swarm Caller. You can also play with your early game units a little bit more, maybe take out one of the Badger Bears, one of the Broadwings, and then you can also run two Edestine. And honestly, this is pretty nice. So what these cards do, Horn Swarm Caller gives you a really good out to Formidables because you can turn off the keywords. You can also turn off Elusive. You can also turn off the um, Overwhelm keywords. Really, really strong. And you also get boons since you're playing this in Elder. So just overall, really solid card. Would recommend it. Edestine is a little bit more on the meme side. I would say this one's a bit more casual, a bit more fun. But you do get some really interesting games with him. So the reason why he's good is you can play Cloud Drake right on 6. And then if Edestine is in your hand then it's going to be 7 mana, so you can curve it. You play Cloud, and then discount Aristine down to 7, and then boom, play Edistine immediately. And that's really cool, because every time he dies, he resummons with 1 HP and regains Deathless. So he's a reoccurring threat. You basically have to silence or obliterate him, otherwise he's just going to stay, like, on the board. And that's so annoying for the opponents to deal with. And then also an attack call, give enemies minus 1. So you can be on, like, uh, Aristine plus a couple other dragons, maybe you do a Lattice and give everything fearsome, and then all of a sudden you have a bunch of fearsome dragons and an attack reduction, lowering the enemy board below fearsome blocking, and then you can like attack and then rally and attack again, and it feels really cool, it's it's really fun. I've been playtesting a personal version of the Swarmcaller and the Edistine, and they've been putting in work, so I would recommend it, especially if you want to play a little bit more on the casual side, or if you just want to play the new stuff that just came out, because they're fun and cool and new, so there you go, I would recommend trying that as well. And that's it for the deck rundown, now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. I'll be giving context to why I'm playing certain cards, and hopefully it gives you a good feel on how to play the deck. And for this example game, we're going to be fighting Pantheon Yumi. Pretty good, pretty good. Let's go ahead and mulligan away our strike spells. Maybe keep one? We only run one Gentleman's Duel, right? So we could actually hold that. Alright, seems pretty interesting. We have something to play on three, so that's pretty good. We can also play Dragon Guard Lieutenant on 2, so let's go ahead and slam that. Might deter something like Saga Seeker from coming down in case they top decked it. Or we get 3 free damage right on 2, that's nice. We're on a pretty awkward hand, oh yeah, see they want that. Probably gonna strike it to be honest. Grant my supported ally 2 HP, and that's permanent HP as well. I think we may have to just win the game. <laughs> this is gonna be kinda hard for them to deal with I think. We can just do Gentleman's Duel and live. <laughs> We're so interactive and fun. That's one of the most important cards in their deck to set up is that Wounded White Flame. I'm actually kind of down to trade this too. We just got a two for one deal. That was awesome. And then we can play Badger Bear on four. And then have two mana for single combat. Just in case something else comes down. So this is great. We basically have the early mid game in our hands. All we have to do after is curve. Let's try to attacking this. You think they do something weird like Pale Cascade? Pale would actually put it up to a 4-5, which is disgusting. That's the one! A 4-5 dragon. And now it's a 5-2 all of a sudden. And just like that, we have ourselves a problem. So we're gonna have to like transition into killing that as soon as possible. It's like our next priority. If they put Yumi on it, we're about to be oh, in a world of hurt. That actually hurts too. The 6-5 with Overwhelm for the turn. What if I do like Broadwing, Broadwing single? I'll become who I was always meant to be. That's not even going to be enough. Oh, yes it is. It is now because they're not attacking with the Tiari. Or are they? They are. it down to a 7-5. All right, we have we have an issue. <laughs> this this dragon is a problem for sure. We might have to cloud single or maybe we 
Hope we hit like Challenger. We did not have Challenger. Deathless is good though. Deathless is really good because Cloud Dragon has an on summon effect. So we'll get the discount a second time, which is very, very valuable. Uh okay, I'm gonna try single. As a response to that. They have to be on guiding or another pail. If they're on another pail, I can kill. Alright. Crisis averted, and we got double discounts for our hand. Feels good. And just like that, we have stabilized. Alright, so they are two points away from Pantheon. No Yumi being shown yet. But we're holding the fort pretty well. We're gonna have to do like Fire Spitter, I think. Probably. Pantheon? Um, no. They gotta be pissed about this. They don't have enough mana to unshackle Pantheon. They have got to be a little pissed. Because I would be. That's that's kind of annoying, actually. Now that I think about it, that's really annoying. <laughs> they tapped a three, so they just can't unshackle. Naked Yumi? Wait, why no Yumi on Esmus? Wait, that's a surprise. Why would they do that? I'm gonna shoot that Yumi. I think we're being kind of cringe, and I like it. Yeah, it's like getting very quickly too far gone. Like, it, this is so far gone now. It might be Jover, even. Oh my goodness, we have so many fire spitters. Shoot that. Let's get, uh... Ocean. That way our Broadwing does more damage. If we had like another strike spell or something, or even form up, we're gonna be leveled here. And that would be insane. Oh. Ooh. That is annoying. I want this one back. Because I want to do 7 4, 5 4. I want this guy to die, even though he's shackled at the moment. And we could probably do a 0 3, 6 8, just to get out of my face. That way I can attack with these and be pretty happy. Yeah, because I don't want the Mahira to, you know, kill my Morgana. But I'm fine with all this. This is no biggie. Another cloud. Yeah, that's pretty worth playing. I can take six to face right here too. I do not care. We do the cloud. We do uh, challenger. You leave me no other choice. We have a Morgana level to play around, which is insane. Yeah, we're threatening lethal and open like very easily. They'd have to have like five chump blockers to deal with this, and they only have three cards in hand that we don't know about. Zenith quite literally does nothing, and I can't imagine the other three cards being super useful unless they're like double stuns. Alright, it's a wounded white flame. It's fine. See, okay. They, they are a bunch of like noob blockers. That's okay. Zenith to make the dragon big. Alright, I think I'm going to develop next turn then. I can't see a reason to open now. I think developing is just better. Oh, whoa, wait a minute. I capped. I lied. I, I said a straight up lie. I'm going to open attack because we get to attack twice. That is an incredible top deck, isn't it? I actually have a feeling they have a buff. So we're going to sack our fire spitter. Yeah, because if they had like a stun or something, I'd want to develop and get rid of the blocker, but... Hey, even if they have a stun now, I don't think I care that much. Because <laughs> we're just going to rally. Heal? Yep. Still dead? Still dead! Okay. No double stun or anything crazy like that. And for the next one, we have a deck that I haven't covered in quite some time. That is Jinx Cannon Discard. Coming in with a win rate of 58.92% and a play rate of 1.39%, it is absolutely killing it. Its best matchups include Zed Gwen, Jinani, Lurk, and also Elder Dragon Mordekaiser Viego. Its worst matchups are Meg, 
Elder Dragon Morgana Shavana, Karma Set, and Overwhelm. So this is one of those decks that has a really high win rate because it just absolutely trounces some of the best and most popular decks. That makes this deck a rogue deck because it's really anti-meta. It's good against like three of the best ones. Yeah, it's not super great into the like Shivana, but man, it has a 70% win rate versus Zed Gwen like Janani. That's insane. Like it just absolutely beats them and that makes it worth to play. I think this deck is really, really solid. I don't see it too often, but when I do, it's misery, especially since I'm a Janani player. If I queue into this deck, I go, okay guys, I guess we just lost because it is that powerful. So I would recommend picking it up, especially if you haven't tried it yet. It's really fun and it's really explosive. So it's got bird in the early game to get you some cheap uh, and easy stats. Might be able to hit like flame chompers with this and that feels really good. Might be able to hit your jinx with it and that feels great as well. Just overall really strong one drop. Then we have Kennen who we are not leveling. Do not even look at Kennen's level up effect. We do not care. We do not care about leveling Kennen. We are not recalling and playing him a bunch of times. We're just using Mark of the Storm. It's a really strong um, discard card. So basically if we don't have anything to discard, we want to rummage and stuff like that, then we can just make Mark. And that's really cool. Kennen's also a really aggressive unit. He's nice if he gets hit by the stats. He has quick attack, so he gets the swing. And he's just pushing in aggressive damage. He's basically being used as another aggro card that generates a discard target. Then we have double pie toss to deal with 1 HP units in the early game that the opponent develops. Or commit to uh, pies and kill 2 HP units. Also, this can hit face later on. And that will be relevant because we care about chip damage quite a lot. Next, we have Triple Yordle Squire. This is also another discard target for us in case our hands are a bit scuffed. Or we can actually put stats on our dudes. Tiny Spear is great on uh, our Flame Chomper. And Tiny Shield is great on our champions. So basically, just get what you want and what you need in each game. Zonai Urchin is really good as a discard activator. We can get Chompers down, stuff like that, and also cycle through the deck. We have Boomba Boon that gives us uh, Flame Chompers to play around, which is super nice, really strong card. Then we have Electro Harpoon. This is either removal in the early mid game for really important units that we don't want to be there think like annie and stuff like that it's also really good at dealing two damage to the enemy face so it's a good finisher card we basically just get to like double dip it's removal and also direct damage next we have hard run flame chompers really really good card especially with stat buffs triple mystic shot for the same reason uh, electro harpoon is here we can use this as unit damage or we can use it as face damage uh, rummage to cycle through the deck a little bit more. It's a one of because you don't want to like draw rummage into rummage. It's really bricked, especially if you're trying to level Jinx, makes it really clunky, really awkward. So just one of rummage is fine. Triple squeaker to discard one of our uh, cards and then also get a mecha yodel to play around. Mecha yodels are really strong. There's tons of good options. I've seen a lot of times where my opponent opens like double or triple squeaker and then just wins through mecha yodel pressure because they're just premium units that do a ton of of damage so really really good card and then we have sump dredger just a quick one of because he's a bit more expensive this is a really aggressive deck by the way look at the curve really really aggressive and we also want to float mana so sometimes we just float three that way we can spend spell mana on stuff but yeah one sump dredger same thing as Zonai urchin double arena promoter to get us even more mechiodal access then we can also discount said mechiodal and play it a turn cheaper which is really nice turn early uh, one augmented clock, that way we can predict, find some stuff, make it cheaper as well. Maybe we hit Jinx and we have three mana Jinx. That feels pretty good. It's also an elusive body, get some more damage. Blowback for uh, damage and removal. For the most part, it's going to be a finisher card. Think like, get excited, stuff like that. When we have like extra Jinx, we have her rocket going, we have blowback, we have electro harpoon. We, we have so much damage going into the enemy nexus that we basically just like burn them out from 12. 13, things like that. So Blowback's going to be in here to help and also has a uh, discard synergy. Feels good. And then Jinx, we try to level her as soon as possible and then get her rocket, spam her rocket every turn if we can and get the opponent into those damage thresholds that allows us to burn them out. Really, really cool. Really, really simple. It's probably the best version of discard we have right now. So if you like that archetype in other card games, you just like the idea of discarding your hand, refilling your hand, things like that. This deck will definitely perform. It's so good right now. And again, it's also really good against a lot of the super strong decks. So if you're tired of seeing like the same ones over and over, the Zed Gwen, the Janani, and you just want to trounce them, then you can do that by picking up this one. But that's it for the deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. And for this example game, we have Deep, which is funny because Deep is either a fan favorite or a fan hated 
uh, archetype. I always get a 50-50 when I talk about deep. It's either people love it or people hate it. And people hate to fight it. So, hey, maybe uh, our deck is good into it. And then you have something to beat deep if it's been causing you some troubles. We have Urchin, Boom Boom Boom, Promoter, Mystic. I don't even think we want Mystic. They don't have super high value 2 HP units, do they? Dead Bloom Wanderer, I guess Jaw Hunters. Maybe it's keepable? Maybe? I don't know. I want to play the Boom 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 on 2 and then discard the Chomper. That gives us something at least, so we we'll pass. Or we can play Squeaker as well on it. Boom ba boom. Let's also get to Jinx board. I think that's really nice since we are rocking the Star Guardian Jinx skin. We can rock the Star Guardian Jinx board. And here it is in all of its glory. Star Guardian Jinx has arrived. Very good, very nice. Let's, um... I kind of want an Urchin, bruh. And then just Arena Promoter next turn. Yeah. Anything else? <laughs> bird. Hello, bird. Slaughter Docks. Cool. Bird. We can also play Naked Zana Urchin, so like, not even discard anything. Just to have the extra 2-1 body for open attack. Because I just want to open. They spent their turn 3 playing a landmark, and we're going to abuse that fact by swarming. We are a very, very aggressive deck. Attack with the Flame Chomper because it's Giga Chad. Alright. Uh, 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 uh. I actually think we... Discard the Squeaker. Because I want to Electro Harpoon. It has enhanced stats, but like, I kind of care about my direct damage at this point. They're already at 8, so we're going to kill them next turn. We also got rid of a lifesteal unit. Mm -mm -mm. See, Scarab is fine. I can't really do much about that. I have a bug where the squeaker is still in my hand. Go away. Look, you guys see this? Hey! The squeaker needs to get out of my hand. He's bugged. <laughs> He's like hiding. He's hiding under the screen. What in the world? Classic Riot. Indie game developers. Check Eyeball, maybe it goes away. It did, nice. Um, interesting. So we're going to be doing a Devour here. Devour targets these on an Urchin. I think that's pretty cringe. I don't really want you to do that. We could do Blowback, get rid of both of these. That way we keep our Urchin, but like, is that really worth? I think it's actually fine to just let that go through. And we could do Promoter on the Sump Dredger if we want to play out next turn. But if I don't want to play out next turn, we do Sump Dredger here and then open. I think we want to open attack again. And then save our direct damage. So yeah, this puts us in a pretty solid spot. We're up attackers. They are not near deep yet. Even if they have double jettison, they're not... Actually, yeah, they would be able to do it. Oh, swing. That's fine. So we're going to be threatening 2, 4, 6 damage on open attack. And then we should be able to kill through burn. Uh, 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 uh. Send it! Again, like, this deck just wants to swarm. Attack, 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 burn. Like, it's pretty simple. We don't even have to play around Jinx because we're so far ahead. <laughs> we can just kill with Mystic Shot. Boop. Put it on the stack for fun. Why not? Bonk, bonk, bonk. And dead on six. And last but certainly not least, we have Darius Nar Overwhelm coming in with a win rate of 57.20% and a play rate of 1.39%. It's doing pretty solid for itself. Its good matchups include Zed Gwen, Lurk, Elder Dragon Mordekaiser Viego, and also Elder Freljord. Its worst matchups are Jinani, Meg, Ash LeBonk, and also the Shivana Elder Dragon deck that we covered earlier. So Overwhelm has been around for a hot minute. Not a lot has changed. It's another solid option in case you're already used to playing it. And it's also a good one to pick up in case you haven't started playing it yet because it is pretty simple. It's pretty linear. It knows what it wants to do and it does it pretty well. Definitely one that I would recommend just having in your pocket because again, it's like solid, it's safe, it's easy. It's just well-rounded too, honestly, really cool deck. 
So it wants to be aggressive in the early game with the triple Crimson Pigeon. Uh, deal one to my supported ally to give me 1-1 one, one for the round. Its best target is Ruthless Raider because it has tough. That way you're not even doing damage to any of your units and that feels really good. Nice little 1-2 combo. We have Saboteur to get more aggressive damage in. Omen Hawk to buff the stats in our deck because we are playing Overwhelm units in the mid game. If we hit those with plus one plus one, then that goes so much further than normal. Omen Hawk is so good and that makes Yadulski so good as well for these uh, big plus one plus ones on our overwhelmed dudes. Uh, a random three sisters that we can use for flexibility, depending on what the game calls for. Double Ruthless Raider for overwhelm and also tough because it's good with the uh, Pigeon. We have Sky Splitter, really, really good for combat. And also in case the opponent is playing like Piltover and Zon removal cards, we can use Sky Splitter to protect from that. Next, we have Triple Tusk Speaker to do extra damage to the enemy Nexus while also being overwhelm. So that's great. Iron Ballista, another overwhelm body. Pirouette, which is super good with Tusk Speaker. It's like the other really, really important aspect of playing Tusk Speaker in your deck is to have Pirouette for one mana because of the plunder. And that's really nice. Then you can deal one to something. So you can ping off a chump blocker or you can hit the enemy face with this and also stun another enemy. So you can get a lot of damage in. Pirouette is a really nice like setup kind of vibe to it. So you do Tusk Speaker to set up your Pirouette and then Pirouette sets up your attack. And it just feels really good. You can also use Pirouette on defense turns to slow down the opponent's strategy in case they're getting a little out of hand. Next, we have Double Whirling Death to outplay combats. We can use this defensively to kill like an opposing quick attack unit, stuff like that. We just get the one-sided strike. Um, we can also do this on attack turn. When our Overwhelm unit is being blocked by something, we can Whirling Death that unit and then maybe we get more piercing damage that way. So really, really good synergy. Next, we have Triple Gnar coming in on strike, create a pokey stick. He's also Overwhelm when he levels, so he's going to be a really strong unit for us, especially if he gets hit by the Omen Hawk. We get direct damage. We get pretty much everything we want. Just really, really good unit for this deck. Next, we have the Triple Red Barb Razor Mace. This is our third champion. We're running Gnar, we're running Darius, and we're also running Red Barb Razor Mace. This card's insane. This card is even better than Darius, I would say, which is kind of sad, especially if this card gets hit by Omen or Yadulski, or you just play around it a lot with your buffs and stuff. Uh, you're just going to apply Ikor to the opponent over and over and over, and they're going to keep taking damage. This is going to keep stacking uh, its cost, and it's going to be really annoying. If you open like double Razor Mace, you have a win con, and that's like not even an over exaggeration. You really just do, because you can start playing Sky Splitter on it, you can play Battle Fury on it, and you basically can win the game from those. So, really, really strong cards. Double Decisive Maneuver. This is another pretty good outplay. You want to do this on your open attacks. So when you have the extra five mana, you just do first action attack, stun an enemy that is blocking you and then giving your overwhelmed dudes plus two across the board and pushing a lot of damage. Next, we have Triple Glacial Sodian to come down and give us extra draw and more plus one plus one effects. Really nice on top of an overwhelmed body. Just does everything that the deck wants all in one go. Next, we have Darius um, as a finisher card. Basically, get the opponent to 10 HP, and then he's a big dude that can kill. Another really strong Overwhelm unit. And to round us out, we have a Battle Fury for cheesy lethals, plus 8 damage directly to the enemy face when we have 8 mana for open attacks. Really, really scary. Really, really good. A lot of this deck will hinge on, like, the early game, like, uh, high rolls. Like, if you just open Omen into Yadulski, or, like, Omen Omen into something, you're going to be in a really good spot, and you're going to cheese out a lot of games that you normally wouldn't, just because of some of the cards that you're running in this deck, and opening them in those certain orders. And that's it for the deck rundown. Now, here's a live commentary game, so you can see how it plays out. And for this example game, we have Ari Kennen Elder. Interesting, people still trying to make this work. I remember Ari Kennen Elder being uh, pretty hot for a week. A lot of people tried it. We have Omen into Omen. That's really good. So we have 1, 2, 2, 1. I kind of want to keep this hand entirely. We'll Shen emote back. I don't know if they want to FF or are they saying that they won or are they saying they lost. I don't know what that Shen means. But we have Omen on 1 versus an elusive deck. And that's what matters. Omen into... Oh, we just win the game. This I'm so cringe. I'm the problem, bro. Triple Omen? Alright, we got him with a Jackal Cackle. <laughs> that is actually ridiculous for us to be on Triple Omen Hawk here. That's like best possible hand. Why am I wasting all my luck on this one hand here for this YouTube video? 6-9! Nice, Darius! Right. Right. I'm just gonna take... And then play 
Ruthless Raider. This land is ours. I kind of want something that, you know, is playable though. I wish we top decked a playable unit with all these buffs. Okay, that's a playable unit with all these buffs. 466. Ain't no way, bro. That is just not chill. Hey, you better stun him. Because that is going to cause an issue if you don't. Down to attack this way. 3222 is fine. I'm pushing overwhelm damage. That's also fine. That's also fine. Oh, okay. Recall draw a card. Little shadow shift angle. You know, I haven't seen that one before. This Ari is a bit scary. We can't out her too easily unless we had like... Oh! Whirling Death! I was about to say that. <laughs> I was about to say Whirling Death. So that's interesting and also funny. Play... With this Raider. And we can do something like... This. And this. And this. I want to try killing her. And then also threatening the Dancing Droplet if I can get away with this. There's probably going to be a Nopify or Deny in my very near future. Or a Recall. That's kind of fine. Whatever gets her off the board right now. Because I can kill that Droplet too and stop that chain of events from still going. And then what? You have to like replay her, right? And then, okay. Mark of the Storm. I want to get this Darius down. I think we always have to develop into Ionia because... Fast speed outs are so annoying. Dario. Imagine seeing a 9 9 Darius across the board. That's wild. We might be gaming. They need to be on more defensive options. Like, they can't just play a dude here. They can't just play, like, a 6 drop. They need to be on another Concussive. They need to be on Will of Ionia, Capsize, anything like that. Okay, they just played a dude. I don't think the dude is good. There's no way that's right. Alright, so attack order. We do Darius on the far right. That way he can level during the combat, maybe. Good habit. Always Darius on the far right if he's level 1. Because who knows, maybe we get there and then he levels and it's even harder. Recall is not good into Overwhelm, by the way, in terms of like using it during combat. Because we're just going to do piercing damage. So we might have like a counter deck. I think their stun half is really good into us, but their recall half is not good into us. If their entire hand is like three recall cards for themselves, like retreat, return, uh, another recall, like it's just not good. They're going to be in so much trouble. And buffs too, yeah, buffs are just not enough. Like look how much damage we're pushing. Good luck. Now you have Ikor in your hand. <laughs> Like, good luck. You have to pay three mana next turn, or you die in uh, two turns. Oh, wait. You actually just die. You have to deny my... Oh, they're just dead, like, every which way. It's Jover. Sorry. We got the Tusk Speaker last hit, guys. Ready? Oh, wait. Don't heal. Don't get Ocean off of this. I'm gonna be so mad. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> and boop. I don't want to emote. That's toxic. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I was thinking about it. I was truly thinking about emoting there. <laughs> and that's it for this week's decks. Extra shout out to the patrons on screen. Much love and thank you for supporting. So yeah, to wrap things up, these three decks are incredibly powerful. And what's fun is that they all have their own unique appeal. Dragons if you want to play for the board and play big dragon dudes. Jinx Cannon if you want to dump your hand and beat the meta and Overwhelm if you want something consistent, but also have some high roll potential. I'd recommend each and all of these for climbing as we come closer to the end of the rank season. This has been Meta Report. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Laters!